Hi, everyone. My name is Lisa Hi. Simmons. I am the Executive and Artistic Director of the Roxbury International Film Festival. Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Allison Simmons, and I am the Co-Director of the Roxbury International Film Festival. First of all, we want to say that we loved your film, um, uh, and we're very excited to screen it as part of our online programming um, at Roxbury International Film Festival, our 25th anniversary. So. Uh, it was suggested that we um, do a video recording of some questions that we have that we would love to have you all answer. Um, and so I will let Allison sort of kick off our thoughts, and then I'll start with the first question and we'll go on that way. So Ali, do you want to start with the first part? Okay, so I just want to um, let people know that as soon as people um, are able to watch your film, they'll also be able to watch the, the Q&A and any responses that you have. So we thought that this was a very important story um, because of the way it was told and the, and the co-creating of, of the narrative um, story and to see how culture is affected by colonization. So all of this for us drove the questions of what is the future of you know, your culture and, and when, what's going on um, where you are and that we also know that's happening in so many communities around the world. A lot of our um, films address this um, issue of kind of um, how land is acquired, how land is used, and how people living on those lands are affected by other people wanting um, a piece of their land. Yeah. So anyway, so, um, <clears throat> and with no regard to the people who live there. So we thought that this film really fit in kind of our overall mission to to make people aware of not only the people in our country but all over the world who are affected by um, something similar. So Lisa? So the first question we have is um, this film and the way it was shot unearthed a lot of awareness about these cultures, about the cultures and the people who have survived um, and, uh, and colonization basically. So what we're what we're wondering is, what is the future now with all of this exposure uh, to the outside world? Hey everyone, I'm Keith Hayward, one of the four um, primary filmmakers on Miwene, along with Jennifer Berglund, who's another US-based filmmaker, and Anita Yeti and Obe Ninkimo, who you got to know in the film. Um, uh, before Anita answers some of these questions, I just wanted to say, Thank you to Anita and Obe and, and all the many different people from the community that helped along the way of this 12 year collaboration. Um, and I also wanted to thank uh, Lisa and Allison at Roxbury uh, for, for taking the time to send in this video of questions so I could send it to Anita and Obe. It's um, a really important part of, of the making of this film was that Obe and Anita and others could participate in the, the screening of this film um, outside of their community and be a part of those discussions. So it actually, it means a whole lot um, that you take the time to send those videos. I translated them um, and sent them to Anita and Obe. They were really happy to, to watch them and to think about it, um, some of these answers. Um, Obe lives right now in an area where it, it was too difficult to get um, video response back from her. Um, but Anita was able to send some short answers. Unfortunately, the, the internet service is so unreliable that it kind of was a really difficult process and we could only end up doing it through very compressed videos through WhatsApp. And there's a time limit on those WhatsApp um, videos. So several of her answers get cut off kind of short. Um, so I will try to chime in and um, fill those, fill in those answers uh, when she gets cut off. Um, but anyways, here's, here's Anita. Hola, mi nombre es Anita. En la primera pregunta es, buen, mm, mi idea es bueno sobre los culturas, territorio, cómo están defendiendo para el futuro, cómo será eso. Por eso yo estoy mencionando un mensaje para usted. Y 
igual te agradezco mucho para el futuro sería mejor que ahora que, que lo que han pasado mucho tiempo todo eso sería bueno para el futuro para que mejoren los jóvenes adultos cuando algún día cuando aparecen los mayores ya no van a hacer la cultura como nosotros por eso nosotros hicimos para que en el futuro que salgan, que te mantengan en el territorio. Y igual cuidar en la selva para que no pierdan su cultura, su alimento, todo eso. Estoy pensando de eso para que lo logren en el futuro. So Anita's answer was, was cut off there at the end. Um but she had written out her answers and sent them to me. So I, this was a particularly interesting part regarding uh, change in the future of their culture and territory. So I thought I would just read verbatim what she wrote um, since her answer didn't make it into this um, WhatsApp video that she sent me. Uh, so she writes, las sociedades de nuestro mundo no son inertes, van evolucionando y cambiando y a veces no siempre a mejor. Esas son las corrientes sociales en el universo que vivimos. Pero la idea es que los jóvenes mejoren y sigan adelante en una manera que no olviden la cultura y también siguen luchar para proteger la selva amazónica. Y todo lo que conocemos del mundo exterior a nuestro ser físico. So I thought that was um, particularly insightful. Um, and hopefully it's, that was kind of portrayed in the film. Um, and so, of course, um, we, we saw this in the film and we also um, read your cover letter and we know that the film was um, filmed over 11 years. And so we really want to talk about this, um, your collaborative effort, your co-creating of the story, making sure that um, the people who are affected by the story or part of the story are also part of the storytelling and the filming. So we want to know if there was any surprises or any un expected outcomes from this um, collaboration. Cuando primera vez llegaron como un voluntaria en la comunidad que veriuno y yo era alumna de ellos, ellos, ellos eran voluntarios, vinieron a enseñar a nosotros y yo empezaba a estudiar con ellos, aprendí de ahí como ellos también venían como estudiantes de la allá adentro en la comunidad y ellos empezaban a enseñar como profesores y yo con ellos aprendí cómo hay que manejar la cámara cómo hay que manejar computadora y enseñaron para eso y después empezaron a hacer videos, grabaciones aprendimos a manejar el audio, cómo hay que hacer grabar la historia, todo eso aprendí desde que empecé a estudiar, desde que tenía 16, 16 años ingresé al colegio, desde ahí aprendí con ellos, estuvimos juntos, ellos colaboraron y la Sierra vuelta empezó a enseñar profesora también y ella estaba haciendo como grabación, grabación de nosotros, ella empezaba a hacer cómo podemos investigar a los animales, los aves, anfibios, reptiles. Todo eso empezamos a hacer una tarjeta de la guía de los aves, de los animales, anfibios, reptiles, todo eso para que los niños de la escuela aprendan a nombre de los animales, para que no olviden, porque algunos, aunque viven adentro en la selva mismo, pero todavía no saben cómo se llaman 
pero el idioma de nosotros si saben español ellos todavía un poquito por eso queríamos hicimos eso para que ellos los niños de la escuela aprendan a leer aprender a nombre de los animales eso y la sierra empezó a ayudar todo eso con nosotros igual hicieron con la con los padres de familia de la comunidad tanto escuela, los estudiantes, incluimos ahí, ellos con, estaban dispuestos para ayudar para nosotros. Para el... So Anita's answer was cut off there again. Um, but this question I think is actually really important for, for Jenny and I as, as like white, non Walrani um, collaborators in this film. Basically, we met in 2005 in Ecuador. Um, studying biology and ecology in the region and, and a big part of that was in the Yasuni National Park um, which is the ancestral territory of the Walrani but what brought us there as scientists was that it's the mo it's considered to be the most biodiverse place on earth um, but the important aspect of that is that it is the most biodiverse place on earth because of the presence of the Walrani in that territory and they're them aggressively keeping out outsiders from, from developing and, and exploiting um, the land. Um, and they did this for hundreds of years. So we wanted to explore the biodiversity there, but it was really important to us that it centered the history of the Waurani as, as the reason why it's so majestic and beautiful and biodiverse and, and important to the rest of the world is really a result of the work of the Waurani. So yeah, in 2010, Jenny did a lot of work, uh, you know, looking for stories that kind of address this. She got in touch with Ciara and, uh, and Ciara explained, you know, the, the work that the students in Quidiona were doing. And so Ciara said we could come to the territory and, and teach, uh, documentary and photography um, because that it would have been helpful to the the documentary documentation project that they were already doing consulting their elders about wildlife and, and knowledge in the area um, and then you know while we were there we could we could talk with the community and and see if if making a documentary film um, is something that they're interested in, and if so how would that how would the how would that collaboration proceed and what would be expected of us and um and yeah so in those that first year in 2011 we didn't film as much but we um you know got to know pretty much all the families in in the community of Quiriono and and other surrounding communities and it was very clear that you know um they've gone through this a lot with other filmmakers and they weren't very happy with, with how that collaboration happened in the past. And so they were very clear that they didn't want to be subjects in this film. They wanted to participate and learn um, the filmmaking process and be involved in that. And they weren't just like handing over the, the reins to us. Um, and that was, you know, that was what we, wanted as well so we were ex excited about that kind of collaboration so our commitment to them earlier on was that we weren't um we weren't taking ownership over the film that it was a um it was something that you know how it was distributed how it was shown if money was made by it where that money would go was a conversation that would be had with the community to figure out what's best so that was a good uh, starting point I think to the collaboration and over the years it just kind of build I think every year when we returned and we'd show footage um, and we'd we'd get all the the you know um, we pretty much uh, got every bit of footage that's in their language translated to Spanish and then to English and through that you know we showed a lot of the footage to lots of different people and um, and kind of tried to take advantage of every opportunity to, to bring resources to the community. I think over time, uh, that trust kind of 
just built and built. And then in 20, March 2020, uh, I was supposed to go, we were supposed to go back with a, I think we had like a three and a half hour edit um, because it was, it was really important to us in the editing process that we weren't, um, we weren't blocking off other avenues for the story. So we kind of kept it really, it's, it's basically what you saw this film, except it was, every cut was extended and additional scenes that we weren't sure about if they liked it or if they wouldn't. And we were supposed to go back and spend a, a month or two doing the final edit with them. But unfortunately the pandemic happened. Um, uh, so that year in lockdown, I, I think I cut it down to about three hours, but I still wanted to keep it long. Um, and then as soon as we were, I was vaccinated and um, it was safe to go back into the community because that was a huge concern. Um, I went back and with Anita and Obe and Winyare, uh, who's Obe's husband, um, we kind of uh, worked more on the narration and connecting all these pieces. Uh, that was like a super exciting part of this collaboration because because of the lockdown, I'd spent so many hours not being able to communicate with them, um, but still feeling like I got to keep this moving and editing it. So finally going back, showing these things and, and you know, some of the things, it was clear that they didn't, they were not, they didn't, they didn't like, it didn't resonate with them. And, and so that went in some other things that I was hoping would resonate with them, but I wasn't totally sure because this distance, you know, seemed to resonate with them. Um, and so through these discussions, we kind of worked out the final editing steps for the film. So that's, that's a very long answer. Sorry, but it, it, it's a really hard to narrow down. It's very case by case, I think, in terms of what a filmmaker like me, who's an outsider to the story they're telling, what are the things that they should do to make an ethical film that isn't extractive? Um, that was kind of the underlying thing behind this 12 years is that we, we studied science there and we always, in the Amazon, and, and we always talked about extractive industries like the oil company and logging and mining. And what was excluded from that conversation was the film industry and was a scientific community and the medical community who also are extractive industries in terms of places and communities like these Wawrani communities and, and the Amazon. Like all the documentaries I've ever seen about the Wawrani were taking their stories and selling it to the rest of the world. And none of that was going back to the community. Um, a lot of times the community doesn't even know where that footage is or where it went. Um, and so it was really important for us to try to figure out how do we make this, how, how do we, um, how do we address that issue of documentary as kind of inherently extractive uh, in the way it's been done in the past. And then we feel like this, and this is the feeling that we walked away from the film, that it's really a love letter to both um, you know, our ancestors and um, the Amazon and indigenous cultures everywhere, really. Um, and so we, Lisa asked about the 11 years. Um, and so as people grew and as development and destruction, what do you see for the future of moving ahead? What is, what is it you see also for this film, where you want it to go and what impact you want it to have on others? And then we were also thinking, you know, everybody, we had a lot of things to think about. Um, but then we also, not only the, the <laughs> people within the film and the subject matter, but I'd love, we would both love to know how this changed uh, you as directors, those who were directors of this film, how did it change you? And what sort of have you maybe have a new mission uh, based on what you have seen and uh, over these last 11 years? Desde 2011, hasta 2000, Ahorita estamos en 2023. Para mí fue, fue 
como un sueño. Yo nunca pensé que iba a, a ver, o sea, van a verme a mí en el, en el mundo internacional. Y después, de, ya cuando terminó el documental, ya empezaban a, a publicar. Y, y ahí Walter Kidd me dijo que el proyecto ya está funcionando todo eso, yo me sentía orgullo, le dije, sorprendida, me quedé, le dije, ¿cómo así? Mi documental me salió, todo eso, la historia que yo estaba estudiando, también, también, mi familia, también cuando yo tenía a mi hija, mi abuela, antes de morir todo, y lo que yo gradué, lo que cuando puse en la capa, igual mis compañeros que fuimos cuando estuvimos en la escuela, todo eso me sorprendía, me sentía feliz. Una parte por, por como tenía mi abuela, por esa mmm, enfermedad, así, y me sentía triste, pero Después yo le dije, yo sí voy a seguir logrando para el futuro, para que no se olviden los niños y los jóvenes que ahorita vienen. Quiero que sigan adelante para el futuro y que tengan más ánimo. Eso estoy pensando ahora por mi documental y también ahora... Igual estoy contenta por ver de los 11 años. Fue mucho tiempo y ahora ya están saliendo. La gente me ve, me dicen, me enviaron los mensajes buenos. Eso me gusta mucho, aprender y seguir adelante. Yo quiero seguir más adelante en este festival, en este documental. Algún día, si Dios quiere, en Encontraré a ustedes y seré con contacto en línea en todo eso. Part of our um, our audience, they always want to know what people are going to do next. You know, they're taken back by what they see in the film, and then they always want to know what what is your next step. So either with the film or just in general in your life. So if you guys could um, talk about that. Por ahora estoy. No estoy trabajando. Tenía trabajo así corto plazo. Después así estaba enseñando como profesora. Lo que enseñan de todas las, todos los países. Como universidad, ese proyecto de la Universidad de Texas. En ese proyecto yo estaba enseñando a los niños de la escuela. De, de las comunidades, yo se iba a enseñar a ellos y de ahí, así como profesora, ellos como tienen la idea de aprender matemática, lengua, literatura, y, y eso, ya después de eso, ya se acabó este proyecto, de ahí ya no tenía trabajo y vivía donde mis padres. Ahorita estoy, me quedé, todavía no estoy trabajando porque ahorita como tengo mi otro nuevo tercer bebé que estoy embarazada y no puedo trabajar. Ahorita para el futuro yo estoy pensando trabajar, pero más estoy enfocado del documental, cómo puedo seguir adelante para el futuro. O sea, ¿cómo puedo manejar en ese proyecto? Tener económico para ayudar a, mis, a mi familia. Porque a veces lo que viven adentro a veces no tiene trabajo. Por eso como que siento preocupado todo, todo eso. Para el futuro quiero mejorar, para ayudar a ellos, para que salgan adelante los jóvenes, con los niños los mayores de la comunidad, todo eso. 
Esa es mi idea para el futuro. As far as the future of the film, um, we have showed it in uh, festivals in Ecuador where, where members of the Guarani community could go and watch it and, and be part of that discussion. Um, and then we also brought a projector and, and showed it in several Guarani communities and held events there. And that was really exciting. Um, uh, and so we hope to do more of that, have another um, once it screens a little bit more here in the U.S. to um, dub over all the English-speaking parts and some of the wow, Spanish-speaking parts, dub it over into the Wild wow Torero uh, language. And that way, all everyone in the community, elders, young ones who don't speak Spanish or, or can't read, um, can, can watch the, the film in its entirety. Um, so that will be something I hope to work with Anita and, and Obe and others um, in, the, in the coming months so that we can kind of release it and distribute it as digital files to, to all the communities that want it so they can you know, watch it in their communities whenever they feel like it and it can be kind of part of that historical archive of, of you know, a moment in history, I guess. Um, yeah, so that's, that's what I hope for in the future. And the one thing too is that- um, There's another thing. There's one other thing and, and that is, and it's, it is also, it's probably almost closely related to sort of like, how were you impacted by it? But what we always ask to you, like what you want the audiences to take away from this film? Like what, would, what is your nirvana? What is the thing that you're like, we made this film because we want people to know X, Y, and Z. I mean, Allison and I took so much um, from it, but we just would love to hear in your words what you want people to take from it. And the last question for me is to make the audience learn from this film. What, o sea, how nationality Guarani Yo estoy mencionando a la audiencia que viendo esa película de nosotros, o sea, para mí sería importante que ayudan a la comunidad que viven en la selva a hacer un económico que tengan un poquito para que ellos vivan cuidando la selva, territorio, también la cultura, todo eso, lo que sucedió en esa película. Por eso yo estoy men mencionando por eh, este mensaje para que lo, lo, la audiencia aprendan y ahí seguiré conversando con ustedes en todo momento por mi película ahí vean qué tal salió mi documental y yo igual le agradezco a ustedes y por mi familia todos estamos bien también saludo a ustedes por en otros países Y yo también aquí en Ecuador estoy bien. Yo seguiré en cada festival. Yo seguiré hablando con ustedes. Con los, y muchas gracias en esa película que vieron nuestro documental de todas las comunidades que colaboraron. Eso yo felicito mucho. También tanto a ustedes y hacia mí. Gracias. Chao. Again, we really enjoyed the film. We think it is beautifully shot, beautifully told, and um, we want to give you a round of applause. Yes. Uh, yeah, so thank you so much again for including us in, in the Roxbury Film Festival, and uh, I hope everyone enjoyed it. And um, I'm going to be putting up uh, QR codes on this video uh, so that you can get in touch um, with me if you have any questions about the film, but also uh, with Anita. Um, uh, you can reach out to her on, on WhatsApp or Facebook Messenger. 
Anita would love to hear from you. Um, so uh, reach out. Okay, thank you.